Hi, I'm Alex Kim, and for my gender leisure project, I decided to try high tea at Lovejoy's Tea Room in San Francisco. Before I go on to talk about my experience, I'd like to mention a few history facts about high tea. High tea is actually not what we believe it to be. Americans usually misinterpret high tea as fancy tea time with snacks and scones, whereas in Britain, this is actually referred to as low tea or afternoon tea, which ranges from 4 to 7 p.m. High tea is actually used by the working class, which occurs around 6 p.m., with tea accompanied by a large meal eaten on high table, which is high tea. High tea, or what it's known as afternoon tea, was predominantly for females, possibly because of its past history and how it got started. Although tea was already popular, it was Anna Russell, Duchess of Bedford, who created the British meal, afternoon tea. She enjoyed drinking tea with baked goods and snacks as this would satisfy her cravings before dinner time. After inviting some of her friends to join her, afternoon tea became a popular social gathering for women. Although there are males who also enjoy tea and snacks, they are usually accompanied by women instead of just having tea and snacks on their own or with another male directly. Tea and snacks does not display the masculinity that men should have, so instead when they have tea, it would be with a heavier meal than just snacks. There were males who attended tea parties, but it seemed that they were more so often at the coffee houses. It seemed that there are many males who participate in afternoon tea, but usually they are accompanied by family or female. It is rare to see a male go into a high tea place alone or with another male. It seems that there were not much historical changes in the participation of afternoon tea. The setting and background of high tea places are decorated with female hats and color shades of pink which signifies a feminine trait. Most males would attend if accompanied by a female, but if they were to go alone, they might feel a bit awkward. If the decorations had a little more masculinity to it, and different shades of color, more men might participate in this activity. As my cousin Kenneth and I entered Lovejoy's tea room, the pink hats and Barbie dolls were the first to catch our attention, along with the female to male ratio. Afternoon tea seems to fit the traditional ideas of leisure for women because of the nice chinas and decorations of how the place is decorated. Before entering Lovejoy's tea room, I was told that some of the etiquettes required were very proper, such as that of a traditional woman. They were not allowed to make slurping noises, chew loudly, or have elbows on the table. It's pretty rare to see men behaving like this, or in such a fashion. Another thing that caught my attention before we sat down was a sign that said, Reserved for the Queens. The place was obviously expecting female guests. My cousin Kenneth and I weren't offended by this, but we actually found it quite interesting and pretty funny, although this might make it less appealing for other males to visit. I've never actually participated in low tea before, so this is my first session, and I thought that this was a place only for females where they go to drink tea and eat snacks. I also enjoy drinking tea and although I wanted to try a tea place, each time I see pictures of my friends at an afternoon tea place, it just seemed too feminine for a male to, to be present. The way the rooms are decorated is pretty much misinterpret the meaning of high tea and afternoon tea. Before going to a high tea place, I wasn't really sure if men were allowed or encouraged to go, and although the waitress stared at us a couple times, they, they were really nice overall and they, they were very suggestive and very helpful with the experience. As we sat down, we, we didn't really know what to expect. It was a little challenging because we felt like foreigners. We weren't really sure how to order from the menu and everything was just new to us. The witches would help us out, but during the middle of questions, she would ask us to hold on and she would go and greet other guests. It felt a little awkward. Maybe because we were the only few males that was present. But we'll let that go because she was pretty nice to us during the whole experience. Overall, afternoon tea or high tea was a great experience and I'm sure to try it again. Although the next time I go I'll be with some of my female friends. There seemed to be a nice relaxing feeling about tea and light snack. Although there is a drawback that might not make males want to go or participate. The reason is because the way the place is decorated. It makes it seem as though this certain leisure is only made for certain genders and it 
it makes it a little less appealing for males to enter unless they have female companions with them. Again, the overall experience was great. The food and sandwich, the scones, the tea, they were all great. We had passion fruit tea and shrimp and mani sandwiches with a few pieces of desserts. It was a great experience and I'm sure I'd do it again.